do a really uh, quick video on what a perspective uh, control lens is, or a PC lens. This is a 19mm f4 PC Nikkor. Nikon also makes a couple other PC Nikkors uh, that are older, the 24mm and the 85mm. They're used uh, for product photography, mostly for architecture and landscape but uh, also a great deal for a real estate photography and they're the absolute best thing in the world for uh, panoramas and specifically you keep your camera on your tripod and your plane of focus your camera remains unmoved rather than actually moving the camera around if I were to actually make a panorama of what I'm actually shooting at this would I actually have to change and move my camera around in this case the only thing I'd have to actually do is uh, shift my lens around top to bottom and also left to right if I wanted to if I wanted to make not only a wide panorama from left to right but also top to bottom and combine those images in Photoshop or Lightroom I'm not actually moving the camera at all I'm actually doing is uh, dialing the knobs on uh, my shift control on the front of my PC lens a lot of people look at uh, and I used them back in the day in photography school and they're still used today the bellows 4x5 cameras and 8x10s and people think, well, those have no use today, practically, but they do. The bellows have just been replaced by the actual tilt and uh, shift control of a lens like this. I mean, how do you think? Think of it a second. Look back some of the uh, famous images of Ansel Adams and other uh, um, uh, landscape photographers, how they had all their trees perfectly parallel to them, as opposed to you or me or anybody else that goes out with a normal lens. And, of course, the trees will start converging. Now, I have a couple of black boxes in the view screen right here. And I'm going to actually zoom out in a second and uh, show you what I'm referring to. After I actually do a couple of shift controls, you actually see that the lines of these two black boxes are converging because I actually have the camera tilted up this way, as I would if I were doing, you know, a uh, close-in or relatively close uh, shot uh, where the, my plane, my uh, sensor plane, it doesn't matter whether it's a sensor or a film, is uh, shifted up specifically in architectural photography uh, very much so that uh, we have uh, points of convergence where I actually want to have perspective control so that and people you know while they're used to seeing it they wonder well how does someone get up close to that really tall building and actually take a shot where the building doesn't look like it's about to fall over where the vertical lines don't start converging and the answer of that answer to that is uh, perspective control. Now right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my camera let me actually zoom out here you can actually see I have my camera shifted up and I'm going to take it and then I'm going to make it parallel my sensor plane instead of it being like this I'm going to make it parallel to the stand-in. I'm not going to go outside in this sub-zero weather for this uh, demo video. doesn't make any difference whether I'm using boxes or buildings. Now everything's parallel, but I actually can't see the top of uh, the buildings, or in this case, my boxes. And what I'm going to actually do is I'm actually going to raise the front of this lens up. And everything, the sensor plane, or film plane, of course I'm not using film, but the sensor plane remains parallel to uh, my buildings, or in this case it could be trees, it doesn't matter what it is, buildings or trees or architecture, interior, panoramas. This is how I get those lines. My camera remains unmoved. The only thing that's actually changing is the front of my lens. Not only that, this is the absolute best way, as I already indicated to you, to take a, a panoramic shot since you're not actually moving the camera itself. Hold on a second, let me refocus. Rather, only the lens. Let me zoom in a little bit. And I'll show you something. Here we go. Let's focus uh, right there. Let me lower my lens back down. Okay, now I've set to zero. I actually have a switch over here on the side, so now if I wanted to do a panoramic shot, since right now I'm in shift mode vertical, I can shift my entire lens 90 degrees. Yeah, this lens is nice and cheap at $3,400. An incredibly cheap lens. Now, if you take a look at the lens, I want to take a perfect panorama shot instead of actually taking my camera and going click, 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 moving my sensor plane, different angles relative to the scenery. All I have to do is... See, the lens is going this way. Take my lens all the way or wherever I want to. Take a shot. 
take a shot and take a shot but it doesn't end there I can bring it back to zero again I don't have to do that but I want to do that and I will bring my shift vertically so that now instead of not only combining say I want to do a panorama of a cityscape well that's fine I've swept very far left to right without actually changing the focus plane of my camera relative to my subject matter which is wonderful but I've only I've cropped off the top of the buildings so now what I can do is I can go up take a shot take a shot go down so you can include not only the horizontal but the, what was that old line from uh, was it the uh, Twilight Zone we control the horizontal we control the vertical <laughs> the only way you could do that in photography is a 4x5 or 8x10 camera with bellows or even a GFX GFX the medium format cameras also have bellows systems or also adapted bellows systems some people use 4x5 bellows with their medium format cameras or a lens like this perspective control so absolutely the best for panoramics architecture real estate landscape we also have a tilt control which is an additional control which also has uh, ability to shift uh, 90 degrees relative to a starting position why so I can actually change my plane of focus or I can maximize or minimize my depth of field and that is using uh, the front end of the lens once again like I said in panoramas and uh, real estate and architecture and landscape you're not moving the camera at all you're just moving that lens around you don't actually have to combine multiple shots if you just want to get trees where the verticals do not converge just point your camera parallel directly straight on parallel to the point of whatever it is you're shooting at and then shift your lens vertical once again your focal plane whether that be film or sensor makes no difference remains unchanged for a tilt control we actually can change the plane of focus and like I said maximize or minimize the depth of field which is wonderful you can really get some crazy depth of field let me actually here we go let me zero my lens which I don't have to do you can combine shift with tilt but let me have you take a look here can you actually see that yeah let me raise the camera up a little bit more and zoom in can we zoom in a little there we go focus take a look at the front of the lens so normally for tilt for changing the depth of field for control you can do this or I can go set zero all the way back up so this is the perspective control 19 millimeter f4 PCE Nikkor of the incredibly cheap price of three thousand four hundred dollars now I know you think that's expensive and if you're a hobbyist you're absolutely correct it is insanely expensive however if you're someone that is hardcore landscape hardcore cityscape or you're doing a, you're a real estate guy and you're taking the pictures of insides of really expensive houses people will greatly admire for real estate alone the fact that these freaky deaky lines from the 19 millimeter lens on your FX camera or DX of course you would never use this lens really on a DX camera kind of a waste of money if you got a $3,400 lens that's made for an FX camera you're not going to slap it on a DX but people will greatly appreciate the fact that the lines don't converge people are like wow there's something about your images as opposed to the other photographer while they have the same exposure and compositional quality there's something really great about your images this lens pays for itself extremely fast even if you're a hardcore landscape or cityscape guy especially doing interiors stuff a PC lens is uh, absolutely essential I mean I hate to say that but I mean if you're actually going to get serious or it's your business and it's your business it's a tax write-off 
uh, then this lens is uh, an absolute necessity. I know it's expensive, but I mean, that would be, you know, how stupid would it be if, you know, you're a person that saved up your entire life to buy a Lamborghini and you thought you'd throw some crappy old $200 Walmart Michelin tires on it? That wouldn't be too smart, would it? Same thing as here. I mean, if you really look at the front element on this lens, it's just so obnoxious. <laughs> Let me zoom out a little bit here. Let me increase my exposure. There we go. So that's it, folks. This is the 19 millimeter f4 PCE. Let me actually reset it to zero and bring it back around. There we go. The uh, contortionist lens. This lens, by the way, is manual focus only. This lens recently came out, but if you think about it a second, it's obviously impossible for this lens to be anything other than manual focus. There's just no drive mechanism given the fact of how this lens can tilt and shift and in combination tilt and shift not tilt or shift but tilt and shift that an autofocus mechanism would work in such a lens and if you buy this lens for your work I uh, guarantee you that you'd be really stupid if you don't buy insurance given the fact of you know let's take a take a look at the front element here again really quickly yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, one follow on this lens is over. <laughs> it's all over but the crying. You get uh, insurance on a lens like this. Thank you so much for watching. If you like these videos, really, the only reason I made this video is that I swear to God, I thought, well, has anybody actually else made a video on what the hell a tilt shift lens is and what the hell you do with it? And I found one, and the only thing they showed you is how it shifts. And it's wonderful, but they didn't really tell you the full uses of what a tilt-shift lens is for. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Happy New Year.